So it's the yearly video, we do this every year on the channel, obviously we react to it, we do it and this year it's like no different, it's the 2024-25 Premier League predictions. I think last year I didn't have a great year, I got a couple of shockers but this year I'm hoping to do better, I've put it at the table, obviously it will change um, due to the fact that the transfer window ends on the 31st of August, so these teams who I've predicted could sign a marquee sign and change their season. I'm going off this before the Premier League starts and what I can go off. Rather than going into detail, I'm going to give a very small detail of why I think this team's finishing in this position. Make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It would be a lot if you could do so. Anyways, lads, let's get to it now and let's start off from 20th all the way to 1st. So then, 20th, I've put Leicester City. Champions of the Championship last year, done very, very well, but a lot has changed. The best players left. The manager's gone, they've got Steve Cooper as manager, haven't made enough signings for me and they could still get a point deduction. It's a shame, they've, they're obviously a Premier League side, they've won the Premier League but I think they'll struggle this season 20th. 19th I've got Southampton, another team to get promoted. I feel like Russell Morton is just not going to be that manager, that man to get them um, Premier League safety. I think they've signed a couple of decent players but... I don't think it's enough to keep them up. Like the Japan right back, I think he's a good signing. Brendan Diaz is a good signing from Villarreal, but I think it's just not going to be enough. And then the final team to get relegated, I put Nottingham Forest. It's a close one, it really, really is, but I just feel like it's just not going to click for them. They've survived both. See, they've came 17 from, since come back on the Premier League. I just feel like they're just going to run out of luck a little bit. I feel like obviously Morgan Gibbsway could could still leave. There's, there's players that are potentially leaving the club. There's still some good players like Elliot Anderson. Um, they've still got Alanga as we speak. Callum Hudson a doy, but I just feel like that it's just. I feel like it's just going to be one of them years where they just don't have enough to stay up. Seventeenth, I've got Ipswich and. I was so close to get them relegated. I feel like everyone's saying they're going to stay up. But when you look at it from this point of view, this is the team that got back-to-back -back promotions. I think the last Premier League team to do that was Southampton. They went from League 1 to Championship, came in the Premier and stayed up. I feel like they're just so used to winning. And obviously, coming to the Premier League, they're going to go through streaks where they don't win games and, and stuff. But they've got that core, and I feel like that's so important. When you look at Burnley that came up, they, did, they didn't have the core. They completely changed their team. You look at other teams that have been promoted, Look at Leicester, look at um they, they they've completely changed. That's why I think they'll get relegated. They've got that corn, they've got that get togetherness and the manager, Kevin McKenna, um he's done absolutely brilliant. So I feel like he will keep them up and 17th. 16th I've got Brentford and this was predicted as I'm recording this now, Fabio Carvalho has just been announced. Could that make a difference? If they keep Ivan Tony, that's the big buts and we can't do nothing about that as we speak. If Tony stays they're going to creep a little bit higher. I feel like since they've been promoted, I feel like they've, they've done well to stay up, but they're not a Premier League side, are they? They're, they're not. The, the history and stuff, but... Can I see them surviving? Probably. I feel like it will be a lot closer this year with the relegation, but I feel like last year was a, it was only Nottingham Forest and Luton towards the end. I feel like a lot of these teams on the bottom will be in there or about. I feel like Brentford could have a, a bit of a struggle, but enough to stay up. Fulham. I've got Fulham 15th. I feel like Emil Smith Rowe, unbelievable signing. But I feel like Palini on the midfield is going to be a massive, massive loss. He he made that squad. He was Fulham. He made that squad do so, so well. I feel like losing him is, is, is massive. I feel like it's absolutely massive. And it's a player that you can't really replace. And I don't think they can replace him for how good he is. I feel like Fulham will have a, a, an okay year. Maybe it's Mark Silva might get the sack. But I feel like Emil Smith Rowe will help Fulham and, and, and keep them up. 14th, I've got Bournemouth. Um, I predicted this as I seen the news about Dominic Solanke. They are going for another striker now, but I feel like Solanke got 19 goals last season in the Premier League, which is absolutely fantastic for a team like Bournemouth. But they've signed well, that they, they have, and they've got some good players, and they've got players come back from injury like Tyler Adams and stuff. So I feel like they will do well and, and do enough to stay up. 13th, I've got Everton. I just feel like it's going to be one of them years where they actually start to come a little bit good. Obviously, it's the last time they're going to be playing at Goodison Park. They've got this brand new stadium, and I don't think they'll go down. I think they've got a good enough squad. I think, obviously, Pickford will stay. I think the defensively, they've improved massively under Sean Dyche. And I feel like it's the goals that they're lacking, but... I swear they've signed a striker. I, I, I could wait there. They didn't die. He was at Sheffield United and then um, at Marseille. I feel like he will, will become good in the Premier League. Couple of good signings. Jake O'Brien from um, from Leon. I feel like they actually will do well this season, in my opinion. 
12th I've got Wolves and this is another one I predicted this before um, Pedro Neto got sold and I feel like he is a good player but his goals just, just weren't there I can see Wolves making a, a, a good signing towards the end of the summer I think Kuhn is a very good player Sarabi has performed quite good towards the end of the season I think Gary O'Neill is a very underrated manager look at like Wayne Rooney as a manager not good, but a fantastic player. Gary O'Neill wasn't the best of players, but I think he gets it a lot. And at Wolves, they had a really good season, and I can see them having a, a quite decent year in coming 12th. 11th, I've got Brighton. I thought they were going to be quite bad this season, but I've seen a couple of clips in them in pre-season, and they look good. Signed some good players, and... I think Minter, I think Minter really will be a massive part of Brighton next season. Obviously, at Newcastle, obviously, we all know the crack. I really do think Brighton could have a good chance. Obviously, the Zerbies left. They've got this new German lad in who's 31. Pascal Gross has left, obviously, which is their most probably their best player in the club's history, you could say. But I think they'll be good enough to come 11th. 10th, I've got Crystal Palace. I feel like if Mark Gehi does come to Newcastle, I still feel like they'll still have a good year. I feel like they'll still have a good enough replacement there. The link with the Bayer, um, oh, Bayer Leverkusen centre back and the link with. Um, Lacroix from um, Wolfsburg I feel like they will replace him quite well obviously he is a big miss for them because he is a good player but they've got Eze they've got Mateta obviously they've lost a, a Lise but sign this Mile I saw I've been a massive fan of this Mile I saw in, in these Watford days even in Marseille I feel like he will come good and I feel like Palace will have another decent year 9th I've got Chelsea I've seen the start the day they, since they got taken over two years ago, they've signed 38 players. I just feel like that club's an absolute mess. It really, really is. They've got eight goalkeepers. I thought Newcastle had a lot of goalkeepers. They've got eight. Eight. The whole squad, the, the, the signing players who have played three games in, in Argentina for 25 million. How is FFP? How is PSR letting this happen? How is this happening? I feel like they'll have a poor year. Um, Maresca, done well in the Championship. Can he handle the Premier League? Obviously, they've got European football this season. I feel like they'll have a poor year. Ninth. Eighth, I've got Aston Villa. I feel like they will have a similar year to what Newcastle had last season. I feel like... They have signed a lot of players, and that's where Newcastle's mistake was. They signed a lot of players, so with the Champions League and with the with the league and the cups and stuff, they've got a big enough squad to, to handle it. Obviously, they've lost Douglas Louise, they've lost Musa Diaby, but I feel like they've got a good enough squad to to, to have a decent enough season. I think if you say to a Villa fan, a run in the Champions League with eight, I think you take that every day of the week. So Aston Villa eight, I don't think that's a too bad of a prediction. I feel like the will to have a decent year, and I think they will do well in the Champions League. Seventh, I've got West Ham. Their business has been absolutely unbelievable. Full Kirk, the striker. I'm a massive fan of him. He's your, he's your poacher striker. Loves to get in the box. Somerville, you've got, obviously, you've already got Bone there. You've got um, Pakatar. Um, Aaron Wambasaka. What I think he's I think he's so underrated Wambasaka. I feel like he will shine at West Ham. Um, to be able the centre half, they have signed very very well. Obviously, David Moyes has gone. They've got Lopatelli. I think he's called it. Obviously, for, for my Wolves manager, will he adapt? I feel like they will. Obviously, they haven't got European football next season. After that. I don't know they don't. So I feel like they can force on the league. And if they can get 7th with the signs that they've got, I think Somerville will be absolutely amazing for them next season. And Kudus, how can I forget about Kudus? He's an unbelievable. He's probably one of the best wingers in the league. West Ham to get 7th, yeah. 6th, I've got Tottenham. They've got European football next season. I feel like they could actually go on a bit of a European run. I feel like they've got a, got a squad now where the, the need winners and, and the need goal scorers in, in that team. They've got... Salanti now signed. I feel like Madison second year there. I feel like they could actually have a decent year in Europe. In the Premier League, I feel like they will just come short with six. I don't think... I can't see them getting any higher than six with the teams I've got up here. But for me, Tottenham are getting six. Fifth then, I've got Newcastle United. And here's why. Peter might be going, you, no, predict lower, whatever. We finished seventh last year, nine points off fourth, with a team that we had a 17-year-old in midfield. We struggled massively with injuries constantly throughout the whole season. We didn't have a fu fully fit squad apart from match week one and two, and maybe three. The August. Ever since September, we didn't have a full fit squad. You've got Tonali back in at the start of August. Signings could still be coming in, and I feel like Newcastle United not having European football will help us massively. Fifth, I don't think it's a bad prediction. Um, I feel like we will miss out on UCL, but I would take fifth every day of the week. Fourth, I've got Manchester United. I feel like it will actually be a half decent year for Man United. I feel like 
Ten Hag's finally got a bit of backing. Um, he is a bit of a banter. I mean, obviously, we all know the, the crack and stuff for that with the Sancho situation. All that stuff happened last season, and obviously, the, the, they did finish eighth in the Premier League. Kobe Mayne, who's been unbelievable. I think Bruno Fernandes is going to have a good year. I feel like Manchester United actually will have a good year. I feel like what like the season when they finished, when we finished Champions League and they were up there, I feel like they'll have a quite similar year with that. Maybe to win a trophy, cup, whatever. I feel like Manchester United will have a decent year and finish fourth. Third, I've got Liverpool. They haven't really signed anyone, but I just feel like the way they're playing football in pre-season actually looks quite good. It's either going to be Liverpool are going to go for the title again or they're going to be down in sixth or seventh, but I really can't see that yet. Yes, Salah is getting to his age. I feel like Nunes will have a good year. I think Nunes will get some important goals for Liverpool. Jota. Obviously, they've got Champions League football again next season. I feel like Liverpool will have a decent year. Battle back thirds and, and then... Obviously, Klopp's been there for nine years. I feel like, obviously, they, they, they want to go for the league, but I just feel like it's too soon. It's the first year with a new manager. Slots came in, and hopefully he can do something for them. But I hope not, but third. Top two now. Second, I'm going for Arsenal. I feel like they're just missing that player. Gabriel Jesus is at a, a canny pre-season, but I feel like they need that that big, big striker. That that striker that's just going to score goals week in, week out. That's what they need. I feel like they need probably another centre midfielder to go with Rice and um, Odegaard. But apart from that, defensively they're very, very good. Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel. Possibly another left back, um, but I feel like Zinchenko is there or thereabouts. I feel like if they upgrade the little, the little tweaks in that squad, they could become very, very good. Like, very good. Havertz done well last season. Um, see what we can do again this season, but I've got Arsenal coming second again. And then that leaves Manchester City getting first. I feel like they're just too good. They're, they're really odd. Yes, they've not lost Junior Alvarez, who scored a lot of important goals for Man City over the two seasons where they, where they have won the league. I feel like Oscar Bob. I don't know why I've just got that vision. Oscar Bob is going to be unbelievable this season. I don't know why. I've seen a couple of clips in there and there, but I, even before then, I just had this vision of he's going to he's going to be a player. Him, you know, he scored against us last season. Obviously, Haaland's going to score. You've got De Bruyne. Probably his, maybe his last year. Could be Guardiola's last year. If they could win the Premier League for half a decade, every single time, that is some some achievement. So that's my Premier League prediction, boys. Let me know if you agree. We do it every year. We'll be looking back at this video in May and seeing if um an absolute daft cunt or I'm an absolute genius. If I get 20 hours, it's impossible. You're never going to get 20 hours, 20 right. But you never know. You never know. We'll go through it in May. Make sure you leave a like, boys. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next one. Yeah, castle, yeah, castle.